for being here. Let's begin. Now we'll connect to our breath, feeling that distribution of breath reaching the tailbone and the skull bones. We just start to organize around this central axis of our person. So neurologically, this is our spine. Energetically, uh, spiritually, this is our core. So if we're attuning to our physical body, <clears throat> We're feeling and sensing more deeply into our vitals, our vital functioning. Energetically and spiritually as we organize inwardly and centrally around this core, we access this quality of spaciousness. We access a sense of our higher self our wiser self. So this is where that deeply true resonates in our body. When something's deeply and powerfully true and right and good, but this is where we feel it. So let's, let's access it. Let's set up into knee pile. Let's go left over right to start. Flex and activate the feet so they feel protective. Um, all that musculature helps out the knee. We're going to work that, uh, that breathing that goes in one direction, the Surya Bedna. So let's go to the right hand. And with the left nostril open, so my thumb closes the right, inhale through the left. Switch, exhale out the right. And then we start again, the thumb closes the right. We inhale through the left, and we exhale out the right. So this same direction type of movement. Do a few more on this side. And you might try just without counting, just feeling for that one to one ratio, that one to one inhale to exhale ratio. No count necessary, but just feeling that ratio. So there is another value in organizing around our core, organizing our attention, our feeling awareness. And that has more to do with the resolution of, of we'll say, historical, uh, maybe obfuscations, just ways that we've gotten a little unsure or shocked or little dinged up, okay? 
So then we'll switch the cross of our legs, we'll switch our hands, and we'll switch directions. So the same technique, we'll be inhaling through the right nostril and exhaling out the left. We're just, just switching everything here. And we'll continue, we'll do about five breath rounds on this other side. So yesterday we were sort of playing with the discovery of our habitual patterns that we enact in our body. And so one of the values in organizing and attuning to our core is we can start to discover the impulse of those patterns which far, far precedes the emotion of them or even the movements of them, the, the grosser movements, the, or our opinions about them or the story about them. So something to go in deeply internally lets us explore the, the very beginnings of how those habits start to take their course in our body and in our mind. And if this is interesting to you, you might just start to feel how or where in your core there's maybe subtle, ongoing little torsions. Maybe you Notice a little twist to one way or a compression or a tendency to collapse. For those five or so rounds, we'll bring the soles of our feet together in Baddha Konasana. And feel free to either use the, the foot as a handhold. Inhale, move the shoulders away from the jaw. Lengthen through waist, through abdomen, through chest rather. And then exhaling, pressing the soles of the feet together, begin to fold. Not around, but fold. So let the torso act as this elongating hinge. Again, if we want to study the impulse of collapse, it helps us to intend to move in a non-collapsing way. So for me, that's, that's one of the great imports of feeling and sensing and playing as if we're uh, 
spacious beings. Usually the way we, we pattern ourselves historically is by altering that, that spatial configuration. We contract in it, we tighten and make it small or compressed. Or, right? So as you're inhaling, feel the torso lengthen away from the hips. As you're exhaling, press the soles of the feet together. Feel the, the space in the hips growing. There's more room by pressing. Inhale, we'll come up right. We're going to go right back into that knee pile. So let's go left over right. We'll do a little unlocking the shoulder from here. So we'll bring the uh, right elbow in front of the right shoulder, fanning open the hand bones. Inhaling. Aligning the back of the skull over the back of the pelvis. And then exhale, draw the shoulder down. And scooch that shoulder blade around the ribs, reaching the elbow forward. Reaching out through the wrist, through the little fingertip, the thumb tip, all the fingertips in between. Take your left palm to the inner right elbow. Inhale, feet active. Exhale, the shoulder down, blade down. Now, press to engage the chest muscles. Make that explicit connection. Elbow press, palm, to make chest muscles engage. So focus, feel the chest muscles turning on. Inhale. Exhale the shoulder down, press to feel the chest muscles reaching the elbow forward. Not the whole torso, just the arm, just the arm and the shoulder blade. And release. Take the right hand, reach away from the jawline. Neck release, inhale. Getting breath under the chest wall, under that collarbone area. Exhaling the fingertips, move away from that kind of fleshy, muscular neck area. We'll switch the cross of our legs once more. Unlocking shoulder. So we'll bring the left elbow in front of the left shoulder. Inhale. And exhaling the shoulder down, the blade down. And as you reach the elbow forward, the back of the head remains aligned over the back of the heart, over the back of the pelvis. So the reaching action of this left arm need not disturb how I'm organizing or sensing 
core. Take the palm, the right palm, to the inner left elbow. Take a couple more breaths here. Good. If you're getting really tense in the head and the neck because you're using your face to inhale very hard and sternly, just let the face soften a bit more. And then exhaling, draw the shoulder down. Press the elbow into the palm. Feel that the chest muscles turn on. And once more, open up the hand, open up the feet. And release. Good. So when we unwind the legs, we'll set up dolphin. So we have our elbows set under our shoulders. Same moves, unlocking the shoulder moves. Inhale, drawing the shoulders down. Tweezing the elbows in to get the chest muscles to engage. Exhaling the knees off the ground. I'm going to cue us through the removing of one limb from the ground at a time. If you're leaving the arms, both of them on the ground, just, just hear the words go by. <laughs> so start by transferring weight into the left arm and play with taking away the right elbow, maybe the right hand. Taking two deep breaths in this now three-limbed dolphin. You can just place the hand behind the back, so we'll be putting it right back down to the ground. Okay. And then we set that right forearm down. We'll raise the right leg off the ground. So lifting that right leg, spreading the foot bones, reaching back. While all these efforts are occurring, releasing the, the efforts through the neck, chest muscles still active. We'll set the right foot down. We'll draw the left foot up. And we'll set the left foot down. And then preparing finally to take the left arm away from the ground. And set the hand behind the back. And set the hand down, the knees down. Rest that. Deepen breath, so instead of relying on some kind of short, collapsed, or panting breath, just consciously, fully breathe. 
to me, it's just pragmatic. It's so much nicer to feel soft and replenished than to feel like deficit, working, struggling to get breath. Just simply choose to breathe more deeply. Lie on back. Talk us through that inner leg move or brolga. So be placing the sole of foot to the inside of leg. Inhale, head and shoulders off the ground. Curl tailbone. As we exhale the left leg out, scoop up the right foot with the right hand, plant it. And as you press, reach through that inner left leg. Go all the way to the ball of the foot to notice that left foot toes. They're not rolled out to the left. They're just pointing up at like 12 o'clock on the ceiling. Pull low belly down. Inhale, let that up. Curl tailbone, exhale, reach out to the right leg and place the left foot in the inner right thigh. Press each leg into the other. Reach all the thigh bones you have away from the pelvis. Pull low belly down. Inhale, let that up. Curl tailbone, exhale, left leg reaches. Plant that right foot into the inner left thigh. Plant, press, reach out through all the thigh bones. And there's weight on both sides of the sacrum. Pull low belly down. Inhale, let that up. Curl tailbone, exhale, right leg reaches. Plant the left foot in the right thigh. Plant to engage, engage to reach out. Reach out to feel opening the body, space in the body. Pull low, belly down. Inhale, let that up. I do two more on each side. Two more of those. Each side on your own. I want to take a look at what you're doing. Yeah, press to activate the muscles. Activate the muscles to reach out further. Reach out further to feel the space in the, in the hips, energy through the legs. That does seem to be another one of those correlations where we feel space in the body is often the where and the when we are able to also attune to energy, how energy feels in our particular body, how it moves, how it aggregates, how it densifies, slows, quickens. And we start to feel the directions and the qualities of energy, how it circulates, how it pools. Again, this gives us a lot of insight as to how we feed our, our engrams, our patterns, our habitual ways of letting things be current in our body or stagnant. We well, remember this is founded in energetic practices, so we're relying and using the currency, the movement, to feel that things move. moving in the direction of openness, moving in the direction of defensiveness, moving to mobilize quickly, moving to withdraw, not be seen or not participate, moving 
in, out, in coherent ways, in agitated ways. And I will make the claim we can decipher a lot of this just by playing in these yoga poses and playing with our breath and playing with our attention. How we kind of focus in on these various artifacts. All right, we look done with that. Grab a block or a roll. You're getting, you're getting the love in her leg. And with both legs skyward, inhale into the low belly, low back. Squeeze the object, reach up through the legs, exhale, the head, the shoulder blades up. So squeeze to engage the muscles, reach to feel the muscles, the limbs, the joints opening, pull the low belly down, hold, work with that emptiness of breath. It's an incredible tool to feeling energy move. Inhale, set the head down. Squeeze the object, roll the elbow, and exhale. Float the head, the shoulder blades off the ground. Squeeze to engage. And you don't have to be in a rush to get to that inhale. Take your time, be on empty, pull the belly down, pull the belly down, and releasing the belly. Inhale, set the head down. I'll just talk through one more. Squeeze the object to get some of that blood and that activity going through the legs. Exhale, float the head, the shoulder blades up. Direct that activity or that feeling of the legs through the legs to the feet. Go all the way to the feet. So often in our habitual responses, we lose the feet, feel the feet, active feet. Pull low belly down. It's okay that we're empty on breath. Because inhale, we get to inhale very quickly very soon. <laughs> All right, take yourself through the next five, the next five on your own. Being empty is, is an incredible way to feel how direct how succinct impulses act to get us to move. And if you don't believe me, you know, don't eat for a day and then discover just how you move toward a meal. <laughs> Those impulses can move us in strong and certain ways. It was just that, that little nano moment of just playing on empty and feel, feel which direction the impulse, the emptiness wants to take you. Feel that impulse to want to breathe, to want to replenish. It is a powerful and cool impulse. Looking, looking done. So let's keep the object between the legs for bridge. Here would be my suggestion. If you have a block, 
turn your block the, the narrower way. Should be like the three or four inch way. And if you have a very, very narrow block, you might have to go a little wider or stack a couple of them together. Feet hip width. Inhaling, spreading the, the toe pads. Lifting through the chest bones. Exhale, shift the tailbone toward the block or the roll. So gathering the legs in, in, in as we ascend. Moving into bridge. And we give that block a good squeeze. Feel each leg working into that object. We'll just take three or so more breaths. Work those legs onto that, that object. This gives you a, a moment, actually three breath moments, to play with that, the registry of energy while breathing. That's your breathing is the nervous system learning how that's going in the body. Your breathing is kind of the enzymatic, the digestion, the knowing, the learning about that experience in the body. So activate, right, this is just one way, inner legs. And breathe. Sometimes the breath gets a little fluttery when working with uh, some stronger sensation. That's great. And then we'll lower down out of bridge with that block. When you turn over, we'll be moving to set up dolphin on the wall with that leg, those legs in emergence, or to visualize that ankle or half lotus as we're upside down. So that one ankle will press on that other thigh bone. Okay? So I'll talk us in. We'll set up dolphin near the wall. Place the forearms how you need them, out in front or hands clasped. Move the shoulders down, down is away from the head, toward the hips. Push the earth so both sets of chest muscles engage. Exhale, the knees off the ground. Check your spacing, you can skim, touch the wall. Inhale, step one foot hip height. And then exhale, step the other foot hip height. And now take that left ankle and bring it to the right quad, the top of the right thigh. Go above the knee and push, press. So I'm pushing my ankle, pushing my leg bones, pushing my sit bones toward the sky. So the leg pressures help Move my bones up. <laughs> okay, give it a two more deep breaths. If your spacing's not right, just set it up again. Get your spacing right. All right, place the left foot to the wall. And now we'll use your right ankle, plant it on that left thigh. Thigh, so ankle to thigh. There you go. It's like a half lotus, exactly. And you're using the ankle to push against the quad, the 
the part of the leg you could conceivably see. And push it toward the sky. Mm -hmm. Nothing should feel stressful in the knee. So the pressure can be as subtle as you need. There you go. Good. Use those forearms. Press forearms. Press chest. There you go. Chest moves. There you go. All right. Set that right foot to the wall. Step down. All the way down. We'll shift away from the wall and we'll take it at standing. Inhale, reach arms up overhead. Exhale, fold. So we're going to leave this right foot in the middle of the mat. Inhale, step the left foot straight back. And we're setting up um, like a pigeon or a, uh, where we're tipping onto the edge of our right foot. So the sole of my right foot becomes exposed to the air. And I'm lining up my sternum over instep. You decide where the hands go. Some people put it in front of the leg, behind the leg. You may have to walk your hips forward or backward. Again, make sure everything is good in the knee. Very active foot will help. Heel push will help. Press away from there. Okay, inhaling, we'll slip that right foot back. Exhaling, lower belly to earth. Now shifting the tailbone down, inhale, use the hands, pull, feel the organs, lengthen through your torso. Now stay here, let's take another breath. Make sure that that registers as something in your, in your trunk. Do the bones move? Do you feel breathing in the organs? Maybe, maybe you notice you just kind of tighten all the organs when we go into, into downward, uh, upward dog, or cobra rather. Hands under chest, exhaling downward dog. All right, so we're doing that pigeon-esque move. Inhale, step the left foot forward. We're setting the left foot in the middle of the mat, tipping the foot onto its outer edge. You may have to walk your hips a little forward or walk your leg a little bit back. Just fine-tune it. No pain, deep breath. Let the breath be something of a digester, a digester of you know, being able to feel the experiences of the hip, of the leg, of the groin, of the organs, of the shoulder, of the heart. Let the breath be this, it's like an enzymatic action. Just digesting, knowing, getting a, getting a sense of all these flavors of experience in the body. The emotional ones, the impulsive ones, the protective ones, the habituated ones, the 
free and creative novel ones. All right, then we'll reset that left foot back to the floor. Inhale and step that left foot back. And from plank, exhale, lower to the ground. Cobra, inhale, use the hands. Feel for that softening through the core. Exhale, lower, downward dog. Twisting lunge. Inhale, step right foot forward. We'll place the left knee down. Exhaling the left arm over the right thigh. Now press all throughout that foot. The heel, use the outer edge, use the middle part. Press through the foot so you're not just collapsing and pushing the bones of the hip into each other. Push the earth and start to feel the bones of the hip more in suspension in this activated, protected degree of suspension or spaciousness. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It might feel tighter, you're right. That's, that's part of the, the supportive tension that we're working with, maybe working through. And your next exhalation, we're sliding in for twisting lunge interlock. So sliding that left armpit deeper, right hand reaches behind the back. Option one is just use the strength of that left armpit to press, turning the chest open. And the other option is collecting the hands. Inhale, when we unwind, step left foot forward, stand for standing pigeon. So we're getting that right foot with both hands. If you push the heel into your palm, it may register in one particular place in the hip. If you press your midfoot through the palm, you'll get registry in another part of your hip. So you can finesse that foot pressure. Feel how each part of that foot contributes. Release. Set that right foot down. Let me offer two options at this point. One is maybe I grab a, get near a chair or a wall, and I just start to work the setup of placing ankle over thigh and making a crouching folding move toward either my blocks or the ground. 
What's the other choice? You could take your half lotus, holding the foot initially fold, and working, so this would be a not, not so crouching, this is a more of a straight leg fold. So how are you making your decision? Well, this is based off of just your knee, uh, your ankle, your hip. So the first one, a Galavasana prep ankle over thigh, do bend the knee, crouch, 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 and eventually getting the hands down, down, maybe to block or ground. Okay, so that's a pretty, pretty big old nudge on those hip tissues. And the latter one I show, that half lotus folding forward, you get a little more into the tissues, maybe in the back of the spine, back of the leg. Let's take a, here we go. Mm -hmm. So, two very different foot and leg positions. Two very different ways to, to fold and experience that. Good. Now, whichever one you're in, feel and learn about your breathing, the quality of your breath. Right, letting the breath be the, uh, the digester. <laughs> To exit, bend knee, and you might want to manually help. Just gently slide that right foot uh, down to the ground. Just don't drop the foot. Just, just help, help glide it down to the ground. And we'll step back into downward dog. Inhale, step the left foot forward, twisting lunge. So we'll set the right knee down, exhaling the, the right arm over the left thigh. And twisting lunge interlock. When we inhale and unwind, we'll step forward, standing pigeon. So we're holding the left foot, standing on the right. Left foot in hand, standing pigeon. There you go. And then 
sledding this down into your Galavasana prep, ankle on thigh, crouching folding, or half lotus, Pachimottanasana, uh, half lotus and fold. <laughs> You'll decide if you, you need a wall or blocks to do any of these, either of these. Notice if there's any impulse to hold the breath, just to feel that, know that. And deep in breath again. With each of these, release the back of the neck. There's a tendency to grab and condense at the, uh, under the brain stem. Right, and to exit, bend manually. Just helps slide that foot down. And then exhaling, we'll step back into downward dog. And we'll let downward dog be a moment where we can put pressure back on the foot. Straighten and reach through the heels, the back of the heels, the Achilles, the back of the knee. Without locking the knee joint, you know, work with the active foot to get into the tissues behind the knee. So, you can parse that out, how to make the active foot and the heel reach help you get into the tissues behind the knee, different than the bony, the bony joint end range, the, the, right? So using your discriminating footing, just kind of getting in and around the, the knee, the Achilles, And gently set the knees down. When we have a seat, we'll move, we'll move to Shavasana. It's a good time to do that. All right, when you lie back or, or sit in, uh, in, if you have a, f a seated meditation posture that you like, it's fine. Allowing ourselves to feel the quality of our breath. So we're conscious of breath and at the same time we're releasing the technique that we use to magnify or become conscious of our, our breath. So shedding the technique, the action doing of breathing to feel breathing occurring. Breathing occurring, uh, a participant in and with consciousness, where we choose to feel, to sense, 
where our body opens to that sensing, that awareness. So awareness isn't really something that we do, but there's lots of techniques to help us open and know our own awareness. When our body and our cells are registering their own awareness, their own self, aware of self, that often occurs to us as kind of that, the energies, the buzzing, the vibrating, the fullness, the clarity, the power, the substantiality. So when you're ready, bend knees. Turn to a side and press to seated. Great to have you along. Namaste.